Uh, the next presenter is uh, Dr. Kenjiro Itami. The title of his talk is Catalysis for Carbon, Carbon Materials and Plant Animal Biology. So thank you very much for the introduction. Um, can you hear me? So uh, it's my great honor uh, to be able to participate in this very special event uh, celebrating the 10th anniversary of MBLA. So I'd like to start by thanking Professor Yamamoto, uh, Dr. Suzuki, Dr. Kotani, and Ms. Uchida for making this possible. So to begin with my lecture, let me start uh, with this some little uh, personal uh, slide about the reason why I applied MBLA in 2007. Now, actually, the full story has been already described in this essay, but let me start with this. Because this is related with my father in chemistry, uh, late Professor Yoshihiko Ito. Professor Ito told me so many things, but one impressive suggestion that he gave me when I was an undergrad student in 1994 is that he clearly said to me that it can. Don't go abroad or U.S. unless you're invited. This is very interesting because this is quite opposite to what usual professors say these days to students, but at least it works nicely for me. It was a great encouragement, and I really thought that I wanted to be invited and then show him that I'm reasonably uh, well, uh, doing well as a synthetic chemist. But unfortunately, uh, during the time when I was an assistant prof in Kyoto University, there was a no invitation. So then I have to move to Nagoya in 2005. So that means that I have to change my plan. So my second plan is to first establish my Nagoya chemistry and be invited and then apply for MBLA. But unfortunately, after one and a half years, I moved to Nagoya, uh, Professor Ito suddenly uh, passed away. This was a very sad moment for me, very shocking, because I not only lost him, but I can't show him anymore that I'm invited. But I thought that it may be MBLA could be almost invitation because of the uh, US lecture waiting. So I decided that, OK, this is going to be my first and last chance to apply. And this is what I did in 2007. So thanks for the, all the supporters. I was able to get that. And then this is a picture of the USA tour that I did in 2008. It was an amazing moment making friends, making strong ties to see nice people here, see you again today. And as in short, uh, this MBLA really changed my life for sure. So for that reason, once again, I would like to thank Banyu Life Science Foundation, and in particular, Dr. Suzuki and Ms. Uchida at the time, and also the founder of M MBLA, uh, Professor Hisashi Yamamoto. After having MBLA, I was able to have an own lab and um, also uh, another project, Erato Projects. So these are the collection of the members I was able to work during the last 10 years. Really, really great staff, Erato group leaders, and also Nagoya undergrad student, postdocs, exchange students from abroad, technician, and secretary. And it's accounted that it's over 130. It's an amazing number of great people that I was able to work with. So I'm really, really grateful for all of these people for realizing that I'm standing here. And also, I would like to deliver the key message to buy new people that the product of MALA is not only me. It's all of them are their product. So what I've been doing with them for the last 10 years is synthetic chemistry, particularly focus on catalysis for materials and biology. We focus primarily on the simple but very important air and assemble molecule. And what we do in the methodology is to try to make this molecule as rapid as possible. Therefore, we're basically developing new catalysts or new reactions toward this molecule, mainly using CH activation. But we not only want to make small molecule, we want to see our molecule functioning or working. Therefore, the clear direction is to apply that to, for pharmaceutical science or advanced biology. Other direction that we're interested in is going toward carbon-based nanomaterials. So here I'd like to show the summary of our CH coupling catalyst. So as I said, we're pretty much focusing on aaron symbol molecule, so the target reaction is pretty simple. We try to activate aromatic or heterocycle cycle and try to assemble with an appropriate uh, coupling partner. If you talk about aromatic, there are several kinds of it. 
So some people in the pharmaceutical science or bioscience is interested in these kind of heterocycles, cycles. And people in the materials fields that are interested in these kind of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. But for us, developing catalysts, they're all the same. So for the last 10 years, we were able to develop catalysts activating and transforming almost all CH bond that is shown here by catalyst control, not by directing group. And also we were able to identify or develop a unique catalyst activating otherwise unreactive CH bond that are highlighted in color by these rhodium or palladium based catalysts. Unfortunately, some catalysts became commercially available as exemplified by our nickel diphosphate catalyst so that many people can use our catalyst on a daily basis. But there are some very challenging uh, heterocycle as well. For example, pyridine, number one heterocycle uh, in pharmaceutical compound. It was a kind of hard target for us. But very recently, we finally found the solution to activate the disposition and disposition. And the main key player here is Dr. K. Murakami, who joined our group in a year ago. So today, I'm not going to tell you about all the catalysts and reactions that are developed, but I would like to show you what you can do with that. So let me show you one very old and very new catalyst, uh, which is this one. This is a rhodium one catalyst, very unique, having extremely bulky and extremely electron drawing ligand, which we name after the first graduate student in my group as the Yanagisawa catalyst. We designed this catalyst for the CHR relation of electron-rich heterocycles cycles and benzene derivative. But if you take paroles, something very interesting happens. Usually, the reaction takes place at the alpha position, but this reaction undergo at the beta position, and this is the only catalyst that provides beta a related product. The reason is because this is steric. Uh, as you can see in the intermediate, the circular repulsion between the ligand and the substituent of nitrogen well, not allowed to give this, but accessing this beater position. More recently, we decided to revisit this catalyst for the rapid synthesis of natural product. For example, Hirika and Jun had decided to take this beater related proles and then do the acylation, and thereafter, they subject it to the reaction with the palladium acetate and copper acetate to closing this sooth to aero bond to rapidly access laminarine C and an I. More recently, we decided to collaborate with Hugh Davis at Emory University. So we take this beta related paroles and subject it to the rhodium 2 carbon CH insertion reaction. And by using his catalyst, it beautifully undergoes the double CHR alkylation at the both alpha position. Thereafter, we introduced indoor ring, and thereafter, we treated with an NLDA to deprotonate this particular CH bond to induce the formal 6 pi electrocyclization to close up this benzene ring so that we can access the intermediate that Professor Tokuyama synthesized in 2001 for the uh, intermediate for Dictory Dendry A. So, what we did is uh, achieve the formal uh, uh, synthesis and rapid synthesis of Dictory Dendry A. So as exemplified by this project, uh, we were able to synthesize a number of biological active compound or pharmaceutical relevant uh, molecule using CH activation. And then these are led by our, my best partner, uh, Jun Yamaguchi, as an associate professor. And some of our catalysts was fortunately modified a little bit and applied to the kilogram to ton scale synthesis of real pharmaceutical at the pharmaceutical company, which also showcased the power of CH activation. But I have to confess that this is my, not my ultimate goal. So it has been told that everybody knows that for the last couple of decades, the pharmaceutical science and natural product are very important and also uh, very uh, highly connected with the organic synthesis. But I had the feeling that this is not the only direction of organic synthesis. In addition to that, my personal goal is to have a brand new game-changing transformative biomolecule, for example. So I was thinking that there should be many other fields waiting for us for synthetic organic chemistry. Actually, this is my greatest motivation why I decided to establish new research institute in Nagoya, Institute of Transformative Biomolecule, ITBM. This is extremely exciting interdisciplinary research merging synthetic chemistry, plant biology, animal biology, and theoretical chemistry. So after establishing this ITBM two years ago, 
Obviously, we started the new project in our group. My greatest partner in this project is Dr. Shinya Hagihara, another associate professor. Personally, in this project, I have a three focus shown here, plant growth, biological clock, and bioimaging, because the plant growth is critically important and related with the global food crisis. Having small molecules regulating plant growth and development critically important. Very recently, we were able to discover several interesting comp such compounds using CH activation. Biological clock is another important thing. So as you all know, we are living in a 24 hours rhythm of day and night, precisely. This is also the case for all animals and plants. And what we wanted to do is to have discover small molecule that can change this 24 hour cycle. Very luckily, we were able to discover new molecule of this kind using CH activation. The bioimaging is another important tool, uh, field, uh, a new uh, field for us. And this is a live imaging movie uh, of HeLa cell staining the mitochondrial DNA selectively by our small molecule. But I realized that after you know, uh, putting this one, uh, this is uh, film, so I'm not allowed to say anything about this. So I just promise you that uh, this collaborative work is going to start publishing from this year. So please wait for a while. I hope I was able to convince you the power of CH activation in the bio-related field. But another key message is that catalysis or CH activation can also contribute to material science. And we are particularly interested in applying this to nanocarbon science. And our key player here is Dr. Segawa and Dr. Ito. What I'm trying to do with them is to try to address the grand challenge in nanocarbon, which is related to mixture science. As you all know, we can have a carbon nanotubes or graphene, but they are unfortunately all mixture of different structure with different properties. We would like to challenge this limit by making the structurally uniform nanocarbon as a single molecule. For example, we initiated our campaign for making structurally uniform carbon nanotube from 2005, and our initial idea was to synthesize the shortest segment of carbon nanotube, what we call carbon nano ring. For example, the CPP, sucker perfectly, was synthesized after a four-year campaign using the power of catalysts. Now this one became commercially available. Now the CPP, after four years, we were able to use this as a seed or a template for the growth of carbon nanotube under these conditions. This is obviously the first ring to tube conversion. And the beauty of this strategy is that the diameter of carbon nanotube can be controlled by the diameter of uh, CPP. Although this was great things, but we're not completely satisfied with this because of yield and not complete, uh, incomplete uh, chirality control. But now, we have much better uh, method to do this. We're also interested in a two-dimensional sheet of carbon, which is a nanographene or nanographene nanoribbon. And perhaps the best scenario using organic chemistry is to start with a template and then do the growth rapidly. Very recently, we found that the CH activation is a solution. And then we found that this particular platinum-2 orthoclonal catalyst can activate the K region of PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, and assemble with a silicon bridge aromatic like this to give this kind of product. So in this particular case, it is amazing that it's only two steps to do the four-time growth of pi system with, uh, template molecule. And this, I think, is a nice example of the catalyst control regional selective CH activation growth of nanographenes. And also, in uh, this method, we can directly use unfunctionalized polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon without doing any prefunctionalization, such as bromination or CH formulation, and so on. And during this study, there was a bonus. We were able to discover a new form of carbon. For example, when we take this quinoline, one third structure of C60, we found that by the action of our Palladium orthoclonal catalyst, all the CH bond of cranolin were activated and aerolated with an action of aerobroxine to provide this kind of deca aerolated cranolin, which is pretty interesting. Moreover, our surprise, to our surprise, by treating it within a DDQ or iron chloride 
initially trying to close up the six membrane. Under these conditions, even at room temperature, it went over oxidation, forming the seven membrane that is shown here. This was very surprising because, as you know, seven membrane cannot be planar, but this is all sp2 hybridized carbon. Who wants to be planar? As a result, as confirmed by extra crystal structure, this molecule is grossly warped with having a very rare negative curvature. So we, by accident, discover a new form of carbon, which is a three-dimensional nanocarbon. So I really feel that we're responsible for exploring this new science by uh, putting the power of organic chemistry and catalysis chemistry. So I'm sorry that I went this way or that way, but the key message that I wanted to deliver today is that catalysis or CH activation is important, but that's not only for small molecule. As I already uh, convince you, I hope, it provides huge opportunity in advanced biology and material science. I hope that uh, many young scientists is going to join me this campaign. Another important message is that the fact that the MBA is excellent catalyst. All of my chemistry that I tell you is after MBLA, and an MBLA is really acting as a new, new and efficient catalyst. So people who are sitting here, please aim at this very nice award. I know that there are many young scientists in this audience, so one other message that I wanted to deliver is that let's try to be unique. This is, I think, is important as a scientist, and if you want it to be like that, you have to take a risk, I think. So if you don't take a risk, it's, I think it's not that easy to do that. And this is all for myself, and thank you very much for kind attention. Thank you very much.